And now, let's also create a call center. Okay, a create a cost center, again a reorganization. Okay, so let's create the cost center and we call it as www underscore xyz. Let's call it a sales. Okay, let's call it a sales and let's create a subtype as a cost center and visibility as everyone. Okay. Right. So now we have created a company. If we did a company hierarchy, we have also created a cost center. So now let's associate this cost center with the supervisory organization. Let's also associate the company with our supervisory organization. So let's go back to our supervisory organization, which is w, w underscore, or let's just search by the code. This is our supervisory organization, which is XYZ Motors. Now, how do we include or how do we associate a company cost, center region, etc. with a supervisory organization? So we go to the related actions. And we edit the supervisory organization. We will edit the supervisory organization. Okay. And then we will go to organization assignments. Organization assignments. And there we have two options. One is allowed organizations. One is default organizations. So in the company, right in the company, in the allowed organizations. I'm searching for XYZ group of companies. Okay, this is my allowed organization. So I'm seeing that for this supervisory organization that is XYZ Motors. The allowed organization is XYZ group of companies. I will not be able to assign my workers to a different company. Right. I am not going to be able to associate them with ABC company. It has to be part of the XYZ group of companies. Now you see why I need a company hierarchy. This is a company hierarchy. Why did I use a company hierarchy? Because if tomorrow, I create a new company and I include it as part of the group of companies, right then I don't need to change any other configuration. Right, because I am allowing all companies under XYZ group of companies to be eligible or to be allowed for this particular supervisory organization. If I do it on the basis, of each and every individual organization, then I have to keep changing a lot of configuration. That adds a lot to the overhead. Okay. So when we are grouping things together into, into hierarchical objects, that makes maintenance a lot easier, apart from consolidated reporting, etc. etc. It also makes maintenance a whole lot easier. So now I'm putting it XYZ group of companies as my allowed organizations. Now, what is my default? What is, by default, organization that you are going to use? So we will use XYZ Motors Incorporated. Right, because this is included as part of this group of companies. All, right now cost center. We have created only one cost center. So let's use that WWXY sales. This is a allowed, so I will not be able to assign workers to any other cost center because I am seeing it's only XYZ sales. Now, if I do not want to restrict it, I can still provide a default organization. You are not allowed. You are not allowed to stay back or you are not allowed to stay outside the house after 11 p.m. Okay, that's the rule. Let's say you are not allowed to stay outside the house after 11 p.m. By default, 
You should come back by 7 p.m., got it? Okay. Yeah, so can it be that you come after 7 p.m.? Yes, right. Yes, you can. You mean it's allowed. You may come back after 7 p.m. You may come at 8, 8 and 8, 39, so on. But can you come back after 11 p.m., right? So when you are saying that we are, this is, the allowed organizations, then we have to select from those set of values only. That is rule. You cannot go outside that. You cannot select an A, B, C company, because it is not allowed. The default organization is the most commonly used organization. Got it? Right. So it's the most commonly used. But if you have specified, if you have specified an allowed organization, then the default organization has to be part of the allowed organizations, right? Otherwise there is an inconsistency like, okay, you're allowed. Time is like 11 p.m. But the default organization is midnight. A default time to come home is midnight. Is it consistent? No, you're allowed. Yes, we can. Yes, we may like till now. We haven't even done it. Yeah, we can. We can take it off. No problem. You are giving an allowed organization because you are making the system foolproof. You're making system foolproof because eventually this is going to be used by people who have very limited idea of the work, the implementation. Right. Let's say you have hired somebody as a new person, they are doing the recruitment, they are doing the hiring right. So they may not be able to understand what is what and they will end up choosing a different company. Maybe by just a typo. Right. We don't want that. We only want them to see what they are authorized, what they're allowed right. That's why we will try to make it as foolproof as possible. They will say okay. These are only the organizations that you are allowed, so that, even by mistake, they don't choose something else. Right, because we are. We are configuring Workday in a way that the users will eventually use the recruiters, the HR managers, managers who do not have Workday training, who do not have worked at knowledge. They are going to be the users of this system, right? So we have to make it as foolproof as possible. Okay, so you may want to restrict the allowed organization. That okay, these are the companies that you can use. Okay, and by default, you are going to use this option, XYZ Motors. So if you do not choose anything, this will automatically be pre-filled for you. Right, you may use it, you may choose something else. Now, here are we restricting people to choose anything. Now, that we have left allowed organizations as blank, are we restricting people to something? No, no, there is no restrictions by default. It is XYZ Motors Incorporated as the company, XYZ Sales as the cost center, but can they choose a GMS North America as the company? That's allowed, but that won't be the default. Yeah, that would be for, but it is still allowed. So the user may choose a GMS company. They may choose. Let's say, executive management, from the GMS cost center hierarchy. Yes, they may still choose it, because we are not restricting anything. So if you want to restrict the user, then you have to put in something in the allowed organizations. Clear yes. Thank you, OK. So now let's click on OK to save this. So now we have associated some company cost center, etc. with the supervisory organization. You see, there are other options as well. You can also include region, 
a division program as part, along with a supervisory organization as well, so you go to the related actions. And then you go, to supervisory organization and you edit the supervisory organization. OK, and it will be part of organization assignments. Organization assignments where we are assigning these now. We will see organization assignments when we are hiring as well, and we are hiring workers right at the time of hiring. We assign cost centers, companies, regions, etc. to the worker. Now, if you have something set up in the supervisory organization organization already, then those will be defaulted for the worker. If you want, you can change it. Otherwise you can keep it as it.